This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From website and online store to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. More on this later. <laughs> right. I'm in trouble. In my fridge and in my freezer, I've got 20 pounds of salmon. I've got fillet cut into pieces, I've got fillets whole, I've got scraps, heads, bones, and various other pieces. Now, I have all this because in the previous episode, I challenged myself to buy a whole salmon and to fillet it myself like a fishmonger. I did that to grow as a chef, but also to have a better control over the quality of the ingredient that I use in my kitchen. That's all well and good, but now on my hands, I've got 20 pounds of salmon. Let's turn them into recipes, shall we? With this whole fillet of salmon, I'm gonna make a Swedish recipe called Gravlax. Now, Gravlax is basically cured salmon in salt, sugar, a bit of spice, and mostly herbs. In order to minimize any food risk, you wanna freeze that fish first for at least seven days. I did that already. I'm switching to chef mode always plugging shamelessly my own apron, the one that we designed. We still get a few in stock, so if you want to get them, get them. Okay, I'm gonna cut it in half because it's not fitting my baking tray. So I've got two big pieces of salmon, now I need to rub them with salt, sugar and dill. This rub is simple, it's just equal parts salt and sugar, and then also a big bunch of dill. So this is white pepper, and in this case I need six teaspoons of that. This is the, the sand that I want to rub onto my salmon fillets. I've created a scrub that I would want to rub myself with. You know, like in a Swedish bath, I'm doing sauna and going into ice water and I would scrub myself with this. Now I need to place a weight on it in order for it to expel some water. Maybe this one? No, it's too big. I've got a more radical option. No, it's too big. It's too small. Let's just put a weight on it. And now I need something to press on it. So I'm gonna do this. And now I need to leave this the whole thing at room temperature for two to four hours and then it will go in the fridge to fully cure for like 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Right, I was thinking about the next recipe that I want to tackle and then I thought I'm hungry, I didn't have lunch yet. I'm gonna go for something clean like a salmon fillet with a very pure and minimal sauce on it. I'm doing a super quick cure on the fillet with salt. Then for the sauce, I'm just using creme fraiche, a little pickle juice and some chai. And that's very clean. Oh, putain de merde. You need to remove some of that salt and pat the fillet dry for crispy skin. Then you want to shallow fry. You can really see the heat progress throughout the piece. That's gonna be very crispy. There's nothing worse than a soggy skin on a piece of salmon. It's just disgusting. Oh, wow. That is juicy AF. Mm. So soft, melts in the mouth. Creamy, fatty, slightly salty. There's the sea flavor. One hell of a lunch. It tastes amazing. Okay, recipes, next. 
Right, so the next recipe is something that I'm very uh, excited about. This recipe is almost like a bonus recipe, like a free recipe. Why? Well, simply because I'm only going to be using the scraps, the head, the spine, the tail, the fins. These pieces would be discarded normally. I'm going to turn them into something spot on. So I'm gonna start by sauteing some onions for flavor and also adding chunks of potatoes, which will serve in the final soup. Where people see waste, I see flavors. It's not gonna be very sexy, but I can tell you that this is gonna be super flavorful. I'm adding a few bay leaves. I'm gonna go for a bunch of fresh thyme, celery leaves, and I'm gonna go for, let's say, half a bunch of parsley. I just want to look in my spice box because I feel like we're missing a few things. I'm going to go with a pinch of coriander seeds. Juniper berries. All the ingredients are in. I need to let that simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes in order for the potatoes and the salmon meat to be fully cooked. We'll come back to this chowder later. So for the next recipe, I want to use all the meat that I was able to spoon from the bones on the salmon and I want to turn this into salmon cakes. Now for this one I'm not going to be following uh, a recipe to the letter, I'm going to go by feel, uh, using most of the knowledge that I've accumulated during the meatball series. It's always the same, a binder, usually eggs, and then a filler, for example bread soaked in milk, and then to this you add a bit of seasoning. So I just noticed that my mixture is a little too loose, it's a little too runny, so I need to thicken that with a bit of potato, which I'm going to cook very briefly in the microwave. So these little slices of bread are going to suck up the remaining moisture that's annoying me and that would prevent me from forming fish cakes. Here I've got my uh, spoon meat. I want to make sure that I'm not bringing too much moisture because there is plenty in the mixture already. Now I've got bigger pieces and smaller pieces. I'm just going to make sure that they are all about the same. So I don't want to turn this into a puree. I want some flakes of fish. I'm going to add this to the mixture. Now, it's good to let this rest in the fridge for, let's say, 20 minutes. It's just going to firm up the whole mixture. It's going to be easier to form them in the pan afterwards. We'll come back and make fish cakes later. Okay, so the soup has been simmering for about 30 minutes. Now, my job is to pick out all the little pieces of meat. Every time I'm going to find a piece of fish that is worth keeping, I'll add it to the platter. So I just extracted the cheek, the most flavorful part of the fish. I mean, I've heard this from fishermen. It does feel very soft and juicy. Mmm. The texture is finer than classic salmon. It almost feels like the oyster on a chicken. So this is all the meat that I've been able to save. Now I'm going to incorporate this back in the soup, but before I do this, just discard everything but the potatoes. Keep the liquid. I'm going to strain the soup because there are a few fish bones. And then when you want to serve, add fresh herbs. Now, obviously I can't eat that much food today. So I'm going to keep this for later and portion it. of that broth. It's savory, it has a bit of thickness to it. I'm guessing the collagen is playing a role, almost like gelatin in beef stock. Okay, label on everything and then in the freezer it goes. Hopla. Right, so my fish cake mixture has been setting in the fridge for 30-40 minutes. I can already feel that this is firmer and it's going to make my life easier 
when it's going to be time to form the patties. So to make the fish cakes, portion the mixture into bowls, cover in breadcrumbs, these are Japanese panko, and then flatten into patties. Then, shallow fry for a few minutes until cooked through and crispy on the outside. Okay, I just want to taste one super quick, even though I had tons of salmon today. I told myself I'm only going to have like a small bite just to taste it, just to see if it's good. No, I'm going in. You get two of these, a bunch of vegetables, a bit of salad. You've got an amazing lunch. So that's it for day one of salmon recipes. And we just have to wait for our Gravlax to fully cure. This is what you get after 48 hours of curing in the fridge. I had to empty the water, I'd say three, four times. So let me cut a slice. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, look at that beast. Oh, look at that color, it's pretty dark. All right, so you should probably eat this with a piece of bread, right? Should probably not. The texture is phenomenal. It's way firmer than the salmon. Way tastier also. So, I found some Swedish bread. This is rye bread. I'm gonna go with a bit of salmon on it. And by a bit, I mean by much. Homemade Gravlax salmon. Mmm. Wow. That is buttery. It might be the best Gravlax that I've ever eaten. It takes a bit of time, but making Gravlax was probably worth cutting the whole salmon in the first place. That stuff is like borderline addictive. Mm. So in the end, I feel so proud. I feel so proud not only of this Gravlax, but of the whole adventure and of myself as well, to be honest. With the whole filet, I made tons of portions that are in the freezer right now. I made an enormous Gravlax. I made beautiful fish cakes that I can feed my kids with. With the head and the bones, I made a lovely chowder. That's also when I discovered the beauty of salmon chick, which is an absolute delicacy. Now, I didn't even show you everything, because with salmon belly, I also made fish fingers. Think of how much I have stepped up as a chef in this adventure. I would do it again in a heartbeat. There is no way on earth that I'm ever gonna eat pale, frozen salmon fillets that I showed you at the very beginning of the first episode. I feel like once you have tasted the pleasure and the mm. connection that I had with this food, there's no turning back. I hope you will give it a try. we we'll catch up in the next one. Bye. Salut. Okay, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I think Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground. It includes e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your product look their best online. Something I've noticed and that I love to push is that Squarespace makes it easy for chefs and creators to monetize content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member arrears, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like video classes, online courses, or even newsletters. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash French Guide to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video.